Yo, 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 what up, dog? Chris from the Unrelenting Brush, checking me on this glorious Monday morning. I say glorious, it's grey and gloomy, but I'll take that over scorching hot sun any day. Um, Monday, new week, hope everyone had a good weekend. I had a great time. My brother and I last night played our first proper game of 10th edition 40k, hashtag new 40k. Uh, so this video is going to be a breakdown of how the game went, how we generated our mission, what our thoughts are, what the initial kind of... Uh, feedback will be um, what we liked, what we think could be better. Um, it's used basically from the contents of the Leviathan box, so we're going to go through all the bits and bobs that we used from there. So although this might not be what's classed as a proper game, um, because we didn't have the data cards for the models, we don't have obviously all the codexes and stuff yet, um, we were able to play the game through the base mechanics of the core rules using the rules for the models from the instructions of the Leviathan box set. So hopefully by the time you guys get your hands on Leviathan, all the data cards will be out for you to get, so then you can have a proper impression of yourself. But until then, which is probably a couple of weeks away I'd imagine, here's a breakdown of my first proper game of 10th edition Warhammer 40,000. So yesterday evening my brother and I decided we wanted to take 10th edition for a spin, even though we don't have the complete set of rules, we don't have the data cards for the models, or all those gubbins, we wanted to give it a go and see how it plays. So using the core rules from the Leviathan book, using the instructions which have the rules for the models in there, albeit in a base form, no special rules, just their stats, um, their special rules based on their weapons but not their data card special rules, uh, and the models we used we decided were from the combat patrols which were shown off in the battle report on Warhammer TV, uh, so we'll break those down as we go. And we generate our mission using the chapter approved mission pack which is the card deck you get in the Leviathan box set, this handsome book here. So, we had everything we needed to get started playing, so we went about generating our mission. Here is what that looked like. So here is the information sheet that tells you how to generate your mission. Initial, immediate um, ideas on it as we start generating our mission is, good god is it wordy. Now, people who don't know, myself and my brother and a few of our friends are narrative users. So we're not all about, you know, optimised lists or meta chasing or the latest chapter approved in GT packs and ITC nonsense and stuff like that. Not a bag. If it's yours, cool. Have a good time. Uh, so we're not sure if it's very much because of match play and the emphasis on having a balanced game and generating the missions you want to play to make sure it's as balanced as you can make it. Um, but we found it incredibly worthy initially. Now, is this a consequence of them having to be clear? So making sure all the parameters are there. Is it there to try and idiot proof it as much as possible? Possibly. But initially, my brother and I are used to opening a book. There's our mission bit of text, there's the map, crack on. That said, when we did generate our mission, um, it did end up coming together quite nicely. Maybe it just took a little bit of learning, a little bit of rereading. So just bear that in mind. If you're a match play player, you're probably going to enjoy this a lot more than I am. Again, that said, I did enjoy the mission. I love the fact it's randomly generated. It makes every game unique. Um, but maybe just bear that in mind that if you are going to start playing out of Leviathan, brace yourself for some text. So we generated our map, we generated our primary mission rule, and we generated like a twist. Uh, so that was all fine, we pulled three from each deck, one of us chose one we didn't want, the other one then chose the one they didn't want, leaving us with the one that we were playing. So when we generated our mission, we then had to decide if we were going to do fixed objectives or tactical objectives. Now again, there's a lot of terminology and, not buzzwords, but, you know, f phrases and terms in, the, in this deck to make it as versatile as possible for match play games. We decided to split it so that my brother would do tactical objectives and I would do fixed objectives. I wanted to do fixed objectives because it means you generate your two secondaries. That's that for the game. You can't swap them for any reason. You can't fod them off for a gambit. Those are that. I'm not a very good player, so if I've got the mission cards in front of me and they're not going to change, I'm happy with that. Uh, my brother then did the tactical ones, which means you can swap them out as you want to. You can fod them off for a gambit from turn three onwards, I believe. So we thought this would be a good demonstration of how the objectives play. So once we generated our mission, there should be some photos flashing up here for you now, we then decided to start the game. So he played the Space Marines, the Crimson Fist, he played with the Terminator Captain, the Terminator Librarian, 10 of the Infernus Marines, and the Five-Man Terminator Squad. I played Tyranids, I played the Hive uh, Winged Prime, uh, 20 Termagants with the Ripper Swarms, the three Von, R Von Rhein's Leapers. Uh, the Bard Gaunts, which are the Biovore guys, and the Cyclophage. Now, obviously, these are the Combat Patrols. We know that Combat Patrol is going to be a big thing for the new 40k. I'm really excited about it personally because I love the idea of everyone bringing a box of models that is a little army of, like, 500 set points, whatever. 
and they all play against each other. I think I would rather play three games of that than one big 2,000 point game myself. So we got our combat patrols ready. Looking at them, obviously there's enormous disparity between models, there's more units for the Tyranids, the Space Marines have. Granted some big beefy Terminators, but you need to be really careful about what you do with those if you're playing an objective game. So before we start the game we had to declare what's going to be in reserves. My brother decided to put his Terminator Lord, uh, Terminator Captain sorry, and his Terminators in Deep Strike Reserve. What it was called. I decided to do the same with my winged prime and kept him off the board. We then deployed our forces, as you can see on our deployment map in the example up here. So once we deployed our forces, it came down to a simple rollout. We both talked through our mission, uh, uh, through our primary objective and our secondaries, just so we understood. So that as we played, we could go, cool, have you remembered this? When does that happen? When do you score that objective? Because a game, is always, a game will always be as good as the person you're playing with or the people you're playing with. So when you're learning a new, a new edition, don't worry about winning the game. Have a conversation with your opponent. Make sure you're both trying to get the understanding down, just so that going forward, you will enjoy the game as you go because you're playing it properly. So with that, we rolled off. Um, my brother rolled higher, so he took the first turn and away. Before we got into the game, we realized that maybe this game was meant to be played on a larger board. We played on the small combat patrol boards because um, that's all I had at hand for the time. We were playing with relatively small armies, it made sense, but the objectives from the mission box, I believe, are meant to be played on a larger board, so the 44 by 60 whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, But we decided to fab that off. We played the objectives and deployed them as they were in the examples. So again, as you can see, there's the example up there. There's lots of lines and numbers to tell you where to put your objective. That's fine because previously when you had some mission packs and it had objectives all over the place, you had to work out how far away they were, you didn't have the numbers to tell you that, and it was a really a game of protractors and compasses. This is really nice because it says, cool, so it's 18 away from the centre, 12 inches up from the centre line, then 6 inches to the left. Yeah, cool. Takes a bit of getting used to, but then all your objectives are down, done, sorted. Let's go. We began the game, my brother took the first turn, we were clear about when we score our primaries, when we score our secondaries, let's crack on. So the initial turn sequencing, obviously now it goes to the command phase, we both generate command points. We then uh, did our movement phase, everybody moves about the battlefield, that's what we need to do, do your advances. Uh, there was a couple of instances where we used overwatch in the movement phase, which you can do now, which was good. Uh, that really kind of, there was a situation where my barb guns were about to be approached by the terminators, which means that you get an early round of shooting off, which means one of the wounded terminators died. Obviously in ninth edition, you could only overwatch when you were being charged, which means that Terminator would have been able to shoot with the phase previous, so it could have made the difference against my Barb Gaunt. So having Overwatch in the movement phase, or the charge phase, not both, I think is a really, really good uh, way to jimmy the mechanic of Overwatch. Uh, our twist was really, really fun because it meant you paid double command points for the command reroll, and, and so again, that automatically made us think about what we're going to do with our command points. Uh, generating one each command phase, so even your opponent's command phase was good because it meant I was rocking them up dead quick. I tried to use some of these stratagems from the core book, but some of them were really situational for the Tyranid, so I didn't see the point in using any of them. I'm sure when the codex comes out, or maybe we'll get some of the index, maybe, uh, there'll be some more situational ones that will help us do what we need to do with those. So the shooting phase, again, this is where it feels like 9th edition 0.75, because um, it's exactly as it was before. It's all the standard protocols, can you see them, how many are in range, rapid fire, twin link, all the stuff you know and love. Uh, the psychic phase is obviously now being rendered as shooting attacks or combat attacks or whatever the rule is for that specific um, psychic ability. That was good fun. Um, it nullified the psychic phase, which, as I've mentioned in written articles, and my brother's mentioned in written articles, World Eater players, Necron players, Sister Battle players, it's just take X model wounds, your opponent secures X secondary objectives, have a nice bloody time. Uh, so that was a really nice way to see it integrated. The psycho phase had a wonderful time in the combat phase, but I'll get to that in a second. Yes, from what I've seen, a lot of people who've played 10th edition in terms of content creators and people who've been to events and demoed it, they say it plays quick, but stuff doesn't die as quick. Now, I don't know if it was the rules and the instructions, if they'll be any different from the rules and the data slates or the data cards, whatever they're going to be, but um, stuff did die pretty quickly in this game. The Pie Blaster Inferno Squad rolling D6 per guy, they were just incinerating stuff. So my Lictors died relatively quickly. They almost nailed five of the Inferno Squad but the sergeant was able to run away, they then got absolutely annihilated by flavors. Uh, the Barb Gaunts, although they get a lot of shots, again, they get D6 shots per dude, they still swear strength 5 with their launchers, AP nothing, 1 damage. I don't know if that's going to change because it didn't really do a lot. They were good for chipping away wounds at squads of marines. I think they did a couple of wounds to the Terminators, but otherwise, 
I'm not sure. They'll be good against any other army, maybe, that's not Space Marines that doesn't have a high toughness or a high number of wounds. Either way, they were cool. They sat on an objective and did exactly what I needed them to get there. The charging phase occurred. Again, very little change there. 2d6, get up there, get into combat. My Lictors nearly picked up a squad of Infernus Marines. My Psychophage was running up the middle of the board to hold an objective ready to charge the Vibrarian in the next turn. Heroic Intervention occurred, so Heroic Intervention is now, instead of a hero can heroically intervene three inches into a combat, it's now a stratagem, but you can move it to six inches. So he's able to get his Librarian tagged into my Lictors, they're not Lictors, Von Ryan's Leapers to help uh, get rid of some of them as I was attacking the Inferno squad. Again, the whole fight first thing is really easily explained. If you charge, you fight first. If you have the fight first rule, you also fight first based on if it's your turn or not. So from there, the turn ends, done. Uh, it played fine. Again, we picked it up really, really quickly. We're veterans of 40k. We've been playing for over 10 years now. Uh, again, if you've played lots of 9th edition, you're going to pick this up really, really quickly. Understanding your turn sequencing from the second turn onwards is where it's really going to start to reflect the new edition. So turn two. Uh, in your command phase, you generate command points. Now that some units have taken wounds and lost models, you then need to do your battle shot test. So roll 2d6. You need to equal to or over the leadership characteristic of your model. If they fail, they are classed as Battleshock. It invalidates them from using stratagems. It makes them a little bit less reliable in the game. This happened to my brother's Inferno squad, who had just a sergeant left. He then chipped away from there. Um, thankfully, I hadn't lost anything in order to do one. So then going into the second turn, we started looking at our objectives. So we're going to score this at the end of this turn. Although the cards are wordy for the match play card pack, Starting it with when you score immediately for me is enormous because there's nothing worse than seeing an objective, fast space reading it and going, oh right, I actually score that at the end of the turn, not the start of my turn, so I need to track my points back or vice versa. Maybe I'm just a bit thick. Again, I'm not a match play player. I don't play to accumulate the maximum number of points. I play to have cool models running about the board and for cool cinematic moments to take pictures and annoy the internet with. So from there, we did our battle shot tests, we generated our command points, we double checked our objectives, and on we went. So in the second phase, the Librarian was about to be tagged by the Psychophage. I was really excited for that because the Psychophage is designed to eat Psychers, so I really wanted to see just how big he was. Uh, we also did our Deep Strike Reserves, so the Terminators and the Captain came in at the bottom of the board near my Barb Gaunts. Not what I would have done if I was my brother, I'd have put them more central towards the board to be a little bit more harassy, maybe take down the Psychophage, there's more objectives closer to that side of the board. He did what he did, again, I'm not going to say that he's a legit number one ITC player. So from there, I deployed my Winged Prime, nine inches away from the Terminators, just to keep them in eye line. I then moved some Termagants around, or before I did the Deep Strikes, I moved the Termagants around to try and get some shots on the Terminators, just to try and work their numbers down. I know they're tough, they're three wounds, they're tough in a squad, they've got a two-up save. I'm not going to get rid of them with those units that I've got, but I can certainly try and harass them. From there, we did some shooting, I shot the Terminators with my Barb Gaunts and my Flesh Borer wielding Termagants. I think I got one down to one wound after all those shots. Uh, the Psychophage did his spitty shooting attack and did a wound to the Librarian. Uh, I had a unit of Termagants flanking to the far side to secure the objective at the top because I had a secondary which was have three units in three board quarters, three inches away from the other board quarters. So I had my Barb Gaunts in the objective in the bottom quarter near me, the Termagants up in the far left objective, at uh, the far right objective, sorry, holding that one, and then my Psychophage was going up to engage the Terminators and the Inferno squads for that objective up there. So I was trying to play to get that objective. So shooting was all done, we then went to charging, Psychophage charged the Librarian, I charged the Terminants into the Terminators just to tie them up for a turn because I know the Terminators will kill them, but if it takes more than a turn, I'll be in a result there. Uh, the Psychophage was brilliant because he attacked the Librarian, uh, so when people said that stuff doesn't die as quickly this edition, this is where I didn't see that. So there's a Psychophage, got uh, d d6 plus 3 attacks, I think I got a 5, so I got 8 attacks. 7 of those then hit, then attacking a Psyker on a 2+, plus, you do mortal wounds equal to the number of damage of that attack. Uh, I got 6 2-ups, so that was 12 damage. He was dead. So that was very, oh cool, that's his job, that's what he does, excellent, glad I did that. Uh, the Librarian did a few things in the turn that he was able to do stuff. Not massively, I think maybe he needs to be more of a support role, maybe attach it to a unit and go against something softer. There's nothing you can do to get away from the Psychophage, it's just how it is. Uh, from there, the Termagants attacked the Terminators, and I think they did the Sweet Summer of FA, at which point the Terminator swung back and killed all but three Termagants. 
but that means that they're still in combat because you don't battle shock to the start of your next command phase. From there, we went into the next turn, we accumulated our objectives, they tallied up. For the rest of the game, uh, I'll do a brief summary. The Termagants died, the Terminators gradually walked up towards the Barb Gaunts, failed their charge over the next few turns. Um, I was pelting them with the Barb Gaunts and I killed one and I got one band to one wound. The Terminators then over the next few turns decided to go for the other objective on the other side of the board. Uh, they then charged my Hive Prime, who was sat on that objective, accumulating me the points, killed him dead. That's the end of that half of the board. On the other side, the Psychophage, after he killed the Librarian, consolidated into the Inferno Squad to avoid getting shot by them. Uh, he then ate most of them, captured that objective. So by the end of turn 5, I had completed my secondary objective. Three times over, I'd accumulated 10 points per round from round 2 onwards. Um, which meant I got the maximum number of points I could for that, which was 50, and I scored 69 points against my brother's 25. So, initial conceptions of that game was good fun, really, really good. I'd like to have had the data cards so we could use the special rules from the models, and again, the combat patrol boxes are all going to get their own special rules to play out the box, I'm really excited to do that. But otherwise, if you played Plenty of Ninth Edition, it's going to feel like putting on a glove that's maybe shrunk and washed a little bit. Still comfortable. Um, the mission we generated was fine once we'd read our cards and understand the processes of it and taught it through, we played it through well. Um, the models are great, the game looked fine, uh, interacting with terrain was good because it meant there were some minuses, there were some pluses to cover, but obviously if you're a space marine or had a 3 plus able better, you don't get the benefit of that. Either the game was good fun. Um, again, it was a short game, it was a few units against a few units, with five objectives on the board, we had some secondaries to play around with, initial impressions were good. I would rather play an open war game or a narrative game without having to read a load of cards at the start of the game and understanding the difference between fixed and tactical objectives. Again, match play players, if that's going to make the game more enjoyable for you and it's going to help you enjoy your ITC tournament games more, amazing, happy for you. Next is hopefully over the next few days we'll see some index cards drop or some data cards, the rules for the models. Once we get those, we're going to play some more games. I'm really eager to take my Imperial Guard for a spin and get my summer campaign start started. Otherwise, we'll assume the Tyranids and the Space Marines will get their rules first. We'll do some more games for that. We'll do an open war mission instead of the card box, or we'll do a narrative mission from the Crusade in the book, uh, and go from there. Initial thoughts and feelings of 10th edition? Good. Enjoyed it. Really, really good fun. For the time being, I'm really happy playing my combat patrol games. I'm really happy playing these small 500-ish point games. Playing from the base rules of the book was really, really good fun, and again, it gave us a great impression of what these games are going to be like. I would probably play these again in a large scale game, so in a 2,000 point game or something like that, I would play these again, because I think that could be really fun. It'd be a lot more frantic and a lot going on, and a lot more kind of tactical in terms of how you're going to score your objectives and what you're going to do, and then playing your gambits to fob your objectives off if you've not got fixed tacticals, uh, fixed, object, fixed um, secondary, sorry to then play a gambit and say, cool, get your models to the centre of the board. If you get three units to the centre of the board and they disappear in um, Retreat Deep Strike, you get like 30 or 40 victory points. So those moments could be really, really good fun. But yeah, overall, um, thoughts of the game? Good. I'm eager to play more. Um, the models are fantastic from the buy then. Although it's not the experience I'd have liked to have seen again, I'd have liked to have seen the data cards in the box for the models, but I understand why they've not done it because they're going to be free to download. It's a cost for them. Profit margins, businesses, shareholders, capitalism, blah. Uh, so let me know what you think. Let me know what you're excited about in terms of playing 10th edition. Let me know what's going to be the first thing you play. What's your army that you're going to field immediately? Are you going to do some matched, open narrative play? Either way, let me know what you're excited about. Leave a comment, like, follow, subscribe. Cringy nonsense. Help me keep working, doing what I need to do, which I love, which is painting models and making content around wargaming. Thank you for watching. 